So the process of a carp eating a food item is really fascinating. Now, carp, Cyprinus carpio, that we go fishing for are members of the Cyprinid family, and that is a really diverse family of fish, which includes tiny little fish like some of the barbs that you might keep in a tropical fish tank, for example, a cherry barb, which is only about three centimeters long, right up to the big old carp that we fish for, Cyprinus carpio. And what's really interesting about them is they've all got this protrusible mouth and pharyngeal teeth. Now, what happens when a carp is feeding is it's using its sense of smell and its sense of taste to locate its food. So the nares, which are the nostrils of the fish situated either side of the eye, enable the carp to home in on the food. It's the sense of smell. When it's getting closer to the food item, it's then going to rely on its sense of taste. Now, our tongues, as we should all know, are inside our mouths. So when we taste something, we take a bite on it and we can taste it when the, um, the, the taste is effectively in the mouth. For a carp though, that's on the outside of its mouth. So carp have got taste buds all over the underside of their faces along the leading edge of their pectoral fins and down the body. They've also got thousands of taste buds on the barbel. So there's two on the top lip and two on the bottom lip. And these are like tongues, external tongues that enable the fish to taste its food buried in the sediment. So when a carp is feeding in the silt, it's probing around, it's, it's swimming down into the debris, into the silt, and it's tasting the silt. It's tasting for its food. When it targets an area that's particularly dense in food, for example bloodworm, it then draws that into the protrusible mouth. So it creates a vacuum and sucks sediment into the mouth. Now that's fantastic, except the carp doesn't want to swallow all that sediment. It wants the bloodworm, the valuable part of the food, it doesn't want all the waste, all the silt that the bloodworm are living in. So the next thing that has to occur is the fish has to clean that up. Now, the carp's mouth is brilliantly designed for doing just this. So they have something called the branchial sieve, uh, which is a sieve that effectively sits across the gills. Uh, and they also have something in the roof of the mouth called the palatal organ or palatine organ. Food's taken into the mouth, into the buccal cavity, at which point the, uh, the um, palatal organ in the roof of the mouth traps the food items against the bottom of the mouth. So effectively like putting your fingers through a piece of balloon material, the palatal organ gets these little ripples in it and they trap the food items. The carp can then blow debris away from the food items. It then releases the food and it can backwash it like this. And only at a point that it's reasonably clean will it pass the food bloodworm in this example, back into the throat teeth or pharyngeal teeth where it's crushed. The pharyngeal teeth effectively sit on the final arch of the gills and they are crushing plates, a bit like our molars if you like, and they crush up against a plate called the masticatory plate and the effect of that is to break the food items up before they're swallowed into the esophagus. So the process, suck the food in, sort it from the sediment, chew it, swallow it. And what is amazing is that when a carp is feeding in the silt, it's probably actually swallowing less than 10% of the silt it's picking up with the food. Now you imagine me giving you a pint glass of silt with some bloodworm buried in it and saying, right, drink that down, spit out all the sediment you don't want and just swallow the bloodworm. It's quite a feat. They're amazing creatures.